Hi, I'm Alistair Miller with GOI, and I'm going to talk today about how we're utilizing Google Maps Engine as well as uh, other Google tools like the Google Maps for Business API to bring products to the market related to our satellite imagery. So if you want to take a look at the screen here, um, what we're looking at, this is the standard base map that all users that have Google Earth see. Um, we happen to be looking over London where the Olympics are coming up in just a month. And you can see here looking at this image that if you look at the bottom left of the screen, this image is from June 2010. So it's a bit out of date. You can see that there's some construction going on, but one of the values that we're bringing by partnering with Google and Maps Engine is the ability to feed out temporal stacks of data that's more recent than what's available in the Google uh, the Google base layer. So it's a premium imagery delivery that can really add value to people that are working. So you can imagine if you're trying to do security for the Olympics or if you're doing part of the construction, you're gonna wanna know the most up-to-date information that you, that you could work with. So I'll take a look at this. From here, we're feeding a map that we've created through Maps Engine into Google Earth where it's got different layers, all more recent than the June 2010 image that's in the public layer. So I'll go and turn it on first, and we can see that this first image, while it's a little dark, this is from February 2011, and you can see quite a bit of change between what was in the base and what's here from February. Now moving forward in time, turn this off to look at what March 2011 looked like. You can see a little bit of change. Now move to April 2011 see quite a bit of change, especially in the northern area. A lot of the ground's been uh, changed. You can see at, at the main stadium, and I'll zoom down just a little bit here, that the field's now uh, laid in the stadium, but there's still a lot of work to be done around the sides. You can see the very base of the track circling the field. Now we're going to jump forward to October 2011. You can see quite a change. They've got that top surface of the track down. There's a lot more that's happening around the stadium. Big changes that have occurred in the six, the six months different that's, that's uh, passed. Now jump forward to February 2012. You'll see a big change, especially in the surrounding areas, but they've got that center area probably you know related to the opening ceremonies in the main stadium. See some kind of crazy structure here on the right. Don't know exactly what that is, but maybe getting a look at the most recent image from May will give us a better view. And so this is May, you can see they've constructed some kind of tower. Still a lot of work going on around the stadium, but it's very different, especially if you wanna jump back and move down here, look at this auxiliary field, to compare this image from May 2012 to what's almost two years old in the base layer of June 2010. So that's one example of subscription services that we're able to feed out through Maps Engine to consumers so that they can be accessing premium imagery, the most up-to-date information. Now I want to take a look at some of the value-added products and analytical work that we do that can be offered through Maps Engine and how customers can utilize that. We'll start by taking a look at some analytical work that happens over DC. So GOI Analytics is a division of GOI that takes in all source information to really base look at how certain events have occurred in the past and help predict a pattern for where and how they may occur in the future. So in this case, we're looking at purse snatchings in Washington, D.C. from uh, the summer of 2011. In this case, I can turn on a layer to see the purse snatchings from June and July or August and September. And there they occur as points where for any of these, you can add in the information. This is pulled get all the relevant information about where it occurred, what type of crime it was, um, pulled directly from po police reports, you know, what district it, it was in, etc. But by taking a look at, zoom out a little bit, all these different occurrences, we're able to look to see, one, build a heat map of where they may occur in the future. So this can really help law enforcement if they want to, you know, do some proactive policing, if they need to um, increase their, their manpower in certain regions of the city, are also looking at a density map that's kind of normalized and smooth for where these things, based on the past occurrences, where they're likely to occur in the future. We've had really good success with a lot of these tools working with government agencies as well as commercial customers, given taking in the events that have occurred, whether it's you know based on imagery or just general geospatial information provided by users that we can get from open sources, and build out using our algorithms a look at how they may how they may occur in the future and where they may occur. The last thing I want to take a look at is what we call our 3D airports. 
we've been for a number of years collecting global airports in stereo where we collect two images at opposing angles so that we can extract both terrain elevation data but as well as feature data um, of a given area and in this case focusing on airports. So this is the uh, King Abdulaziz International Airport in Saudi Arabia. You can see here we're looking at the base Google image but by turning on this map we're feeding through Maps Engine you can start seeing a lot of the different uh, structures appearing uh, related to the airfield. This is very beneficial for commercial airlines, for um, government agencies, because airports change very frequently. And as they change, you really want to get an up-to-date view of what that is. If you're coming into an airport, you're going to want to know if there's a new obstruction or if they've changed a runway or how that runway is classed for your particular plane. So in this case, again, I can click on any of the um, structures, figure out the length of the runway, the surface type, all this different kind of information. And since we collected in stereo, we do have all the obstructions shown in 3D as I tilt down here, take a look at some of the buildings where, while they're not textured at this point, you do have a good view of what the area surrounding looks like. So these are all different value-added products that GUI creates that we can feed into Maps Engine and distribute out to users through a very easy-to-use interface, Google Earth, that they're used to working with. Um, they don't have to go invest in expensive software, desktop applications that they may not need. This is something that your normal everyday user can use, get the value of geospatial imagery and geospatial information to pull in and get their job done in a much easier fashion.